All the creatures, small and large, they are part of the ecosystem, so therefore they are part of me. The best part about the Local Land Services Koala Project has been working with the amazing landholders, contractors and traditional owners on this beautiful country between Coffs Harbour and Port Macquarie on Gumbangia, Dungadi and Birapai country. Show the ball, let them know that we're working and let them know what job we're on today. Max, koala. like to take the path of least resistance so if there's a nice open pathway they'll, they'll walk along that and they'll also drop a lot of scat as they walk too um, so the best way to find koalas is to look for their poo and with help from the dogs as well. <laughs> you can help identify uh, koala scat by this lovely shape they're very rarely uh, jelly bean shaped so they're often this uh, straight pellet. Um, they're very dense and you can see here very fine material so there's no bugs or any other seed material. I purchased this property about two years ago with the idea of uh, revegetating and regenerating a, a couple of different forms of uh, forest. One is lowland subtropical rainforest, which we're sitting in right now on floodplain. Uh, it's an endangered ecological community, so it's, it's worthy of um, some protection, some pretty urgent protection. But also, we're very keen to facilitate restoration of some wet and dry sclerophyll forest which we have on the back of the property and some rolling hills to the south of where we are at the moment and the idea behind that was to re-establish some koala habitat uh, this area was once what's known as primary koala habitat which is the best of koala habitats uh, but unfortunately it's become over time very fragmented uh, due to agricultural practices. So it's called progression. Progress, 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 progress. So much for progress, you know. So uh, in the process of progress we destroy and lose a lot of the land, we lose a lot of the spaces, lose a lot of trees, cutting down the pole. That's his home. We climb up there. Dungi, what to call it? The leaf, see? That's where he get his water. Now he don't get the water on the ground, he get the water from his leaf, yeah? And that's how he survives all the impact of progression, you know? So. The koalas evolved on this country over the last 40 million years, perhaps 60 million years. The white fella's been here for only 250 years. And in that time, we've probably lost between 50 and 80% of the habitat for the koala. For me, at the heart of the issue is a moral dilemma. What right do we have to sit on our hands and watch this beautiful, iconic species known all around the world slowly fade away to extinction. 
we have an obligation to not allow this to happen, but to actually reverse it, to repair country. So the great thing about the project is that it provides an alternate opportunity for people who want to do their little bit for nature, who want to improve habitat quality across the landscape, who want to improve water quality and stability of riparian zones. Uh, it provides them with that opportunity to get assistance from the government to revegetate, provide quality habitat for koalas and other keystone species, uh, and to basically feel good about uh, doing their bit for nature. I know that may sound cheesy, but it, come, coming from me, it, it feels very, very satisfying. Uh, in my own situation, I find it extremely worthwhile, one of the most worthwhile things that I've ever done. Some people have said, Martin, you're obsessed with koalas, but I like the koala as much as I like every other native animal I'm responsible for. There's a wide range of native animals that will benefit from habitat creation we embark upon for the benefit of the koala. The beauty of working in private land conservation is that we are supporting not only diverse vegetation types, but also diverse landholder needs and aspirations for their patch. Yeah, we, in the first night that we set traps, we picked up two foxes, uh, a male and a female. Um, and then on the second night, we picked up another two foxes. And we've seen a few cat tracks as well. So, mm -hmm. see how this one goes. As much as they're a beautiful animal, they're just not meant to be here. Um, they're just doing too much damage, not only to koalas, but every other small species. Okay, so these traps are actually rubber jawed, lined. So if you get non-target animals, whether domestic or even native, we can release these animals and you just, yeah, give their foot a little bit of a rub and massage, they will have a soft foot for a, a couple of days, but there's no breakages. And We've recently done a, uh, a fire management workshop. Local Land Services, or part of the program, uh, bought an Indigenous ranger uh, who also spoke about um, cultural burning. So that was uh, really interesting and something that we can look at. Um, in the future if, uh, if needed, because the whole idea is, is protecting these pockets of, uh, of rainforest and eucalypt forest that I've got here to, uh, to, to give refuge for the animals. At the end of the day, it is so inspiring to watch landholders be supported to take the next step in koala conservation and to realise by looking after koala, you're not only helping biodiversity on your block, but you're also increasing the productivity of your land for future generations. Yaji Yaji Yari Barambanga Dama Watanilia Nina 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 Mitanja Yaji Yaji Birigan Ma Pumarang. So the reason we are, um, we engaged with local land services is that after the fires have happened, a lot of koalas are now frequented in our area and um, are spotted throughout the whole of Southwest Rocks. I feel like they've come here because it's their, you know, they wanted to find a safe home, and so now they call you know this place their home. So it's really special that we get to share our home here. It's such a beautiful um, part of Dungari country with our Yaji koalas. Yeah, and that's a part, you know, we say that's a part of our dreaming, not just as Dungari people, but that's a part of our dreaming as the whole of South West Rocks now, like they've come back here. So now it's time for us to protect their home. And we sing a song about Dungi himself. Dungi up your tree, koala come down to me. So, so that's the song we got in Gumbanga, so we're going to put that into uh, uh, the lingo, language, language. So, anyway, so we got a lot of connection. It's incredibly enriching to my life in, in a spiritual sense. Um, I'm an Australian, I have a deep connection to country. I think uh, anyone that is lucky enough to be in this country and is open to wild spaces and spends time in wild spaces is imbued with that core element that makes the nation's character um, a connection to country. <laughs>